With over 20 years experience in all facets of online, Kiri now works with business owners and sole traders doing their own marketing, providing the right strategic insights, expert help, and a combination of mentoring and technical hands-on problem solving to make sure they hit their marketing targets. In a former life, Kimi Romero was the head of digital and communications for financial services company, Australian Super. For over 15 years, Kiri was responsible for the digital experience as well as communication touch points with members and employers. Hi, Kiri. Welcome. And of course, I mean, I'm certain that all this expertise transferred immediately when you started working as a solopreneur, right? Um, yeah, so I've actually been in business for, this is six years now. Um, I was a little bit shocked when we had that conversation. I was sure it was not that long, but it, it's not been a overnight success. And that kind of, you leave corporate and you think you've got all of these amazing skills that are immediately transfer. And there was just a whole lot of other um, skill sets I needed to get my head around as a small business owner, but also taking all of the skills that I did have and making them applicable to what I saw as um, a niche in the market not being serviced very well, which is this kind of, there's this plethora of information of what to do and, you know, online courses and all the rest of it, but there's still this gap between a business actually applying that to their own business and getting the work done, So, which is kind of where I sit. And, you know, it's been a long time coming, but it was not an easy path. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're going to be talking today about positioning, what exactly is positioning? I'm, I'm guessing it doesn't mean what we're, where we're standing right now. No, it doesn't. And I guess it's, you know, there is just so many kind of, there's so much jargon in marketing and I try not to, you know, um, bandy these terms around. But um, I see a lot of businesses uh, in the last 12 months, I've seen over 300 businesses kind of, you know, through this COVID period, particularly a lot of them suddenly going, mm, I've got to deal with this digital environment now. But every single time when we sit down to kind of start with where are you at and troubleshooting what's going on and what do, what's missing and what's working, what's not, every single time there's always this, a lot of the time there's this, this thing around positioning and a lot of businesses struggle with the how do they talk about themselves, how do they position themselves so that it's relevant to their audience. So what is it that they're selling, what is it they you know, what distinguishes them from their neighbour business selling exactly the same thing. So why would someone choose you over another? If you're not really clear on all of that, if you can't just kind of pitch immediately and do the sales, then the rest of the marketing kind of falls over for you. You can't really properly talk to your audience. Sometimes you don't even know who your audience is if you haven't got that positioning piece. So it's kind of one of those things where, you know, we, we might want to kind of push it aside as not being very relevant. But if you if you haven't got the words to sell yourself, then it really translates. And I often find that particularly in small business, people can, when they're face to face to someone, I hear this a lot, they're face to face to someone and they have the conversation and they close the deal. But as soon as they try to translate that into other channels, it kind of doesn't become as effective as getting that face to face. And that quite often is where people are struggling with that kind of, you know, that first get me in front of them and I'll be fine. But how do you get in front of them is quite often where it all goes wrong for them. Okay. So um, what you're saying is when you're face to face, a lot of people that you work with find it really easy, but once they start to look at other channels, so maybe it's email marketing, maybe it's using their social media, they're trying to do the same thing, but it's not translating because maybe they haven't articulated yeah. who, they, who their market is straight away. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because what we kind of underestimate is that when you're in um, front of someone, you're responsive to, you know, the feedback you get from them, you know, and you kind of craft what you're saying to kind of just be just right for that person in front of you. When you're trying to then shift that into these one-to-many channels, it doesn't matter if it's email or your website or social media, um, you know, it it, it, you are t trying to talk to a one-to-many. And the thing is, is if you're not really articulate and clear about what it is that you sell and how you're positioning that for people, it will just kind of land on, on no one. I've got this saying of if you speak to everyone, you're kind of speaking to no one, you know, like people who you're trying who you're trying to sell to has a, they have an ear. 
you know, and what's relevant to them and what's not relevant to them. And so really making sure that you've kind of spent the time trying to translate what you can do in person into, well, who is it that I'm trying to talk to in these more, let's just say, anonymous channels until they get to know you a little bit a bit more right so if uh it, those that are on the call if you've got any questions or uh, have you got your positioning down pat do you know who your market is and has it changed pop something in the chat box if this has been a challenge for you some of you might find you pr- you think you're pretty clear on your positioning so um I- i've got so many questions running around in my mind um the first is you know obviously for some people positioning changed as a result of covid would that be right most people's positioning would change as a result of covid yeah, I, I think that um, it has been a case where a lot of people have had to rethink how do I get in front of these people and what even just down to some of the key messages that they're putting forward last year. Like one of the things that I thought was um, one of the things that we've spent a lot of time with was actually uh, showing businesses how to just create some brand new messaging that they've never had to think about before around safety. You know, oh. in, you know, how do you do business with a business? Well, actually, we're taking care of it. You know, we're wearing face masks. We're doing, like, if you're on food preparation and suddenly it's just like you can still deliver, but you can't have people come into the store or do you know what I mean? Like there was all these things that just kind of changed for people. So even that is kind of going sideways in terms of, well, you still might be for the right, these people, but are they still, is it still relevant? Do you need to kind of shift around? So there was a lot of kind of, some businesses became more relevant. Others, it was kind of, uh, I'm not relevant. How do I stay connected and top of mind waiting for, say, things to come back online and a bit of a pent up demand. And we really did see peaks and troughs for different kinds of businesses as as that kind of, as last year just unfolded. Um, it was, you know, history in the making really, wasn't it? But Yeah, absolutely. Um, everyone had a, it, absolutely everyone had a different experience based on what their business was and who they were um, operating with. So um, I know we've got a limited amount of time. There's probably some people um, uh, that are on the call thinking to themselves, uh, either A, I've, I've got my positioning right or I think I do, or B, I've got no idea what positioning is. Do you, do you have any tips on how you can go about finding or creating your positioning? Because I'm guessing it's not one of those things that miraculously you're in the shower one morning and then it just pops into your head. Though, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I can obviously... I, you know, I've worked with a lot of businesses and this this has been a more frequent conversation I would have, than I would ever have thought. But even for my own business, it is what I started out with and what I thought was my value proposition and who I was talking to has really evolved. And, and for no other reason than as I've progressed with my business, I've gotten to know my audience a lot more and worked out where do I... I don't know, I, where's the low-hanging fruit in terms of these people just, it, these are the people that it kind of really resonates with. There's a couple of really good tools. Like there's a plethora of tools out there. Um, uh, my website has a resource section of tools, which and and my approach to tools is what's the what are the free ones available? What are the kind of ones that you can kind of get by without having to invest a lot of money in? But there's a really great tool out there called um, the Hero's Journey or the Brand Journey. It's it's an American-based company, but he's really taken it's there's a tool that steps you through this process of how do you pitch yourself, how do you talk about yourself? And what's really good about that particular tool is it really shows you that you kind of think you've got it right in terms of you know what your pro- what your client's or customer's problem is or what it is that they're after. But if we just kind of focus on I'm after some red shoes, like sometimes that is not enough, right? That That's kind of it's just the starting point of how you talk about what it is that you have to sell. You then need to kind of help them through that decision-making journey of how, how does that translate into the, impacting their life, you know, it's, so it's the it's the benefit or the, the the practical solution that they're after, but it's also the emotional piece because this is the emotional piece, and this is what this brand journey tool does, and it's free to use. You just need to kind of Google it. It allows you to kind of literally work out how to best pitch yourself in a way that it resonates with someone. So you're talking to um, another business, you're doing perhaps consulting or something like that, but 
you know, they know that they need to fix this particular problem, but the emotional attachment is they're laying awake at night worrying about this stuff. So you can kind of start to see how you start to craft your message and how do you best position yourself with that understanding. And apart from that, there's another list of tools that you could be using around really trying to understand your market. One of them I really love is BuzzSumo. It's great for content research, but what is very good about it is Top, tapping in your your um, your topic. So, for example, George, you might type, uh, want to understand activities for um, people with a dis, uh, disability, right? You tap that in and it kind of surfaces the most popular content across all of the socials based on how much is being shared. So it really helps you see, well, which channel is more dominant and it starts to build out this kind of um, understanding behind your positioning, who your people are that you're talking to and what you do with that. So it's kind of one piece just leads to the other, leads to the other, to the other. Um, so those just two tools that you could go and have a look at. The BuzzSumo one is, it, it does have a fee, but there's a 30 uh, day free trial, which is just super helpful when you're doing this research piece. So Googling the hero's journey and buzzsumo.com. I pop those in the chat. So if they're of interest to anybody, um, feel free to copy those. Um, any, if anyone's got a positioning statement that they'd like to throw or, or their positioning that they'd like to pop in the chat box for a little bit of feedback, we've got a minute or two before we're going to end up our interview piece and um, break out into, into groups. So if anyone's got their positioning statement and they want to pop it in and, and get some feedback quickly from Kiri, feel free. Otherwise, uh, we'll get ready to, to wrap this up. So um, as far as um, all this is concerned, you know, I know we had the COVID piece and, and everything. Um, is it important to revisit uh, your positioning and who is your market that you're serving? Is it something that you should do once a year or, or is it driven by something else? Um, I, I think it's going to be different for every business. So, and I think it depends on where you are and your your life cycle of your business. So, you know, if you're right at the beginning, chances are what you think is what you're offering, your value proposition will evolve over time as you get to know more. Perhaps you're a more mature business, however, and you're kind of feeling pretty certain about this. Like there are some um, businesses where it's kind of, you might think it's quite a static offering. Like if you're an accountant perspective um, from, for example, like is that ever going to change? Well, actually it might change in terms of what you're deciding as these types of clients, I just do better work and it's more profitable for me and I enjoy it more. So actually I want to try and reposition myself to really get more of these types of clients rather than these type of clients. So I think that it is an iterative thing that, you know, and it doesn't have to be a big thing. It's just don't kind of keep doing the same thing and expecting, you know, Different results. Yeah, exactly right. You Absolutely. Do, you do That's have to actively work on it. That's great. Well, we're going to go into groups and I can see that a few people have popped in their positioning statements. And what we might do is, um, uh, you know, they might be the sort of thing, because we've got a smaller number of people today, we're, as I said earlier on, we're expecting about 30, um, you know, there'll be no doubt an opportunity. I'll be doing everything I can to try and mix the groups up as you go through each breakout area. But um just a quiet one. If you've got Kiri in your group, you may want to ask her about your positioning statement as you're going through. So um, awesome. That was great. Thank you very much for that. All those insights. So the hero's journey and buzzsumo.com are two places to start.